a few days ago I uploaded a video about diodes. Uh, about uh, silicon diodes and germanium diodes. I was talking about the difference, especially regarding their voltage drop and their properties. I removed the video, I didn't find it good enough. So um, I had a request to do, the, do it again, upload it again, or tell again something about the same subject. Anyway, that's the aim of this video. Again, like I showed in the earlier video, here are quite a few diodes. These are silicon diodes, power, these are silicon diodes, uh, medium power, and here are here is a good bunch of um, germanium diodes. The idea of the diode is that it uh, can only conduct current in one direction. That's uh, the first idea. And the second idea is that below a certain voltage a diode does not conduct, does not want to conduct. And that differs for germanium diodes and for silicon diodes. And that's a so-called barrier voltage. It has everything to do with the properties of germanium and um, uh, sil silicium with valence bands, etc., etc. I don't go too deep into it, but uh, this is important to tell. Um, the, these are, say, the standard barrier voltages for silicium and for germanium. And I want to demonstrate that with this uh, silicium or silicon diode. Important to tell that the voltage drop depends on the temperature and even on the voltage. And that's quite critical in a certain way, especially when you want to homebrew audio amplifiers. I will tell, tell more about it. Made a kind of test setup. This is a classical silicon diode. Uh, the barrier voltage uh, with silicon diodes varies only a little bit in the, in, in the order of one tenth of a volt. Uh, but anyway, this is say the standard silicon diode, and here is the setup. Here we read the voltage parallel to the diode, and here we see whether current starts to flow. And this is a voltage supply. So I will slowly lift up the uh, the voltage now and see where the uh, diode starts to conduct. So, turning it here, let's see. I hope to pick up both of the meters. This gives a good indication. Slowly lift up the voltage. Let's see what happens. So, here we see that the current starts to flow. And here suddenly there is a kind of breakthrough. And it is on approximately 0.65 volts. Now I turn it back, the, the power supply. And there must be a critical point. Here is, say, the critical point, 0.5557, where the diode starts to conduct. And that's a very important property. When, when I heat up the diode, it differs where the uh, diode starts to conduct. Anyway, that's why you can use a diode as a temperature sensor. And there's a video on my YouTube channel where I've done that. So that was the first important thing. Um, so where can you use diodes? Well, uh, rectifiers, of course, that's common. Uh, we all know the bridge rectifier, we know the um, one phase rectifier with one diode, etc. etc. Uh, but there are um, other important, there's other important application, and it is radio detection. And that's often done with a sensitive silic, sorry, a sensitive germanium diode. 
here quite a bunch of them and I measured all their voltages, their barrier voltages and they differ between these two values. Anyway, this is the setup of such a detector and the idea is that we give that germanium diode a forward voltage. So here are all the radio signals out of the IF amplifier but when their am amplitude, voltage amplitude is not enough could be that the germanium diode doesn't start to conduct and th that means that the radio detection is not ideal. So you can forward bias that by giving that germanium diode a tiny forward voltage here and that's done with here the power supply. Here there is a uh, potentiometer and here we set that germanium diode to a forward voltage and then the radio detection works much better. And this is the principle. You also always see uh, <coughs> diodes in the more classical audio amplifiers and you see them here. This is a classical a two transistor or four, uh, four transistor audio amplifier, uh, complementary end stage, NPN, PMP, and here you see two diodes and they give a certain voltage drop. Um, and that makes uh, that there is always, these diodes are by that way forward biased, um, and that means that there is, there is always a tiny current flowing here and that makes that the crossover distortion uh, is limited or even is uh, gone away, completely gone away. Often an advice is to um, say connect these diodes to the heat sinks. The idea is that when the transistors get hot or warm uh, the the voltage drop, the, the diodes also get warm or hot, their uh, voltage drop changes and that helps to limit the maximum current through the end stage so that such an end stage cannot burn out. It's logical, say, when we have here pure positive voltage, when we um, set the two transistors completely in conduction, we have a class A amplifier and when the current through the end transistors is too high, the transistors will burn out. Um, important to tell is that when you have a Darlington in, in an audio amplifier and you use two silicon end transistors, this is more or less common in many audio amplifiers. Uh, uh, in electronics books, etc., etc., um, um, to make to set these uh, uh, this Darlington into proper conduction, um, there must be a voltage drop double to the value of each individual transistor. That means in this case approximately two times 0 0.7 volts, and here also, and that means that when you study audio amplifier circuits and then I mean the classical ones made with uh, such an, in, with such an uh, end stage, complementary end stage. You always see here four diodes in a row, sometimes three and that's interesting because like I told that um, uh, barrier voltage is also dependent on the uh, voltage. So we give here these um, three, sorry, these four, we give them here a forward, uh, forward voltage and here there's other part of the amplifier. Here we give them a forward voltage and uh, when that forward voltage is higher that means that the, the, uh, the barrier voltage here changes a little bit but it has an enormous effect on the quiescent current. And when you have followed my channel, my YouTube channel, um, you have seen that um, the value of these uh, four diodes is critical 
for the quiescent current. And that's always a discussion in um, audio amplifier circuits, books, etc., etc., how to give the antisistors a proper quiescent current. So when there is no signal here is sent to the transistors, uh, there must be a quiescent current. But when the transistors receive an audio signal, there must be a current flowing. And that current must be exactly related to the voltage changes here at the audio input. Uh, that means that you sometimes see here a resistor parallel, variable resistor, to make that voltage drop in one of the uh, four uh, diodes uh, variable, so that you can set the quiescent current. And like I told, the quiescent current is very important for the uh, crossover distortion with a not good uh, quiescent current. You get this when the sine wave is amplified. You get here, say on this axis here on these locations, distortion. Well, that was perhaps interesting. I hope so. Well, uh, there's more to tell. Uh, at least I want to show more. I also want to show... Uh, this was the schematic of that uh, with transistor, with, with two end transistors. But when you have four end transistors, like I told, you need a higher um, voltage drop to make the two end transistors work properly. And you can also do that with the help of, say, a kind of quasi Zener diode. And you can see that here. So here, instead of these four diodes, I have used a transistor. And you can directly see that with this potentiometer, we can set the voltage drop here between this point and this point. So in fact, this um, a transistor acts as a variable diode, or in other words, uh, a variable bunch of diodes with which we can set the voltage drop between these two bases of the end transistor to a very specific value. And that also means that we can align the quiescent current here by tuning this potentiometer to K2. So, this is a quite good circuit. I've made it many times. Works good. It's in my book, Schematics 2 Audio Amplifiers and Loudspeaker Boxes. Well, that was more or less all to tell. And again, that radio detection circuit, you find it in my book about the um, shortwave radio. These books are available on the website of Lulu. Well, this is, uh, say, the practical information. There's a lot of theory about diodes, especially about uh, their barrier voltages, how you can align them. But I've showed, uh, say, in my opinion, the pure basics. My camera st will stop suddenly. Let's look again when I lift up that voltage to the beautiful side of that pointer that suddenly moves and that also means so here I set in fact I forward bias the diode one important thing to tell when you reverse this there's no current flowing anyway that's logical so you can repeat the whole uh, circuit with a re, uh, no, with not a reverse voltage, but well, I think it's, that's not relevant uh, regarding the subject of this video. Thanks for watching. Here again, say you can also see where on which voltage the current 
say the tiny current starts to flow first first uh, say um, first tiny current and then suddenly we get to the voltage where uh, the diode starts to conduct fully thanks for watching